Okay, so in this video, we're going to go over some of the basics on what atoms are and the periodic table of elements. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so what is an atom? An atom, by definition, is simply the smallest unit of all matter. And matter makes up pretty much everything in our known universe. So atoms make up our, our universe. And so there's three main parts to an atom, and two of those parts are in the nucleus. There's a positively charged part called a proton, and there's a part with a zero charge or a neutral charge, and this is called a neutron. So in the picture, the nucleus is represented by the blue and red spheres all clustered together. Spinning around the nucleus, we have the electrons, and they orbit the nucleus in what's called the electron cloud. We'll go into more detail on that in a little bit. But for now, I want you to know that electrons have a negative electrical charge. When it comes to their numbers, the numbers of protons and the numbers of electrons are usually equal in number. We're going to learn some examples later in this video where they are not equal, but it's a general rule there is that protons and electrons usually have the same uh, number of one another. When you look at this periodic table of elements, you've seen this before I'm sure, the periodic table of elements is a collection of elements that are known to exist. So how is an element different from an atom? Well an element, like it says, is a substance made from only one type of atom. Picture a, a big sheet of aluminum. Let, let's say you wanted to cover some food with a big sheet of aluminum. So you rip off maybe a two foot long strip of, of aluminum. Well that two foot long strip of aluminum foil is simply made from one element. It's made from the element called aluminum. But in that two foot long strip there are billions and billions and trillions and trillions of individual aluminum atoms. So I hope that kind of uh, clarifies the difference between an element and an atom. Well, what about reading the periodic table? You know, you can see the, uh, the black box blinking on carbon. Let's zoom on in and take a look at the square of carbon on the periodic table. When we do, we see that there is the number 6 and the number 12. Well, let's figure out what these numbers are. The smaller number, by the way, this kind of drives me nuts, there's really no standard periodic table format. Sometimes the small number is on top, sometimes the small number is on the bottom, sometimes the small number is in the corner. So that's kind of annoying, but the small number is what we call the atomic number. By definition, the atomic number is the number of protons that the atom will contain. So right now I know that carbon has six protons. Well, think about what we said a moment ago. Usually the number of protons is the same as the number of electrons. So I also now know that carbon has six electrons. Well, the bigger number is what is called the atomic mass or the atomic weight. And by definition, the atomic mass is the combined amount, the combined number of protons and neutrons that are packed inside the nucleus. When you add up the protons and neutrons, you get the mass of the atom. If you're wondering, well, why don't we add the electrons? It seems silly to weigh something and ignore one of the three parts. Why don't we add the electrons to the mass? Well, like it says in the notes, the electrons are just way too small to really have much of an impact on the mass. A good analogy is, let's say you were to weigh yourself before and after receiving a haircut. Yeah, your hair has some weight to it. Your hair has mass to it. But if you weigh yourself before a haircut and you weigh yourself after a haircut, the weight of your hair is so small compared to the rest of your body, it's not really going to register on the scale. The same with electrons. They're just so small, they don't really register. They're so small, they don't really uh, add very much to the mass of an atom. So when we look at the protons, neutrons, and electrons of carbon, I hope you ha can see there's six protons, six electrons, and six neutrons. But let's go through this in a little more detail. They're not always going to be the same number repeated three times. Let's show you how we came up with these numbers. So let's use another example. BE stands for beryllium. 
Well, if I were to give you a moment to figure out protons, electrons, and neutrons, hopefully you can do that on your own. Pause the video if you want to try it on your own. I'm going to go over the answers in 3, 2, 1. So right now, the number on top, the 4, that's the atomic number that tells me the number of protons. So right now, I know beryllium has 4 protons. Remember, the atomic number is the number of protons by definition, but the proton number is usually equal to the electron number. So I now know that beryllium also has four electrons. What about the nine on the bottom? That is the atomic mass. By definition, that is the number of protons plus neutrons. Well, in this case, protons plus neutrons equals nine. So earlier, I know that there is four protons plus how many number of neutrons equals nine. Four plus what number equals nine? Well, there's your answer of five. So that's how you can figure out from the periodic table protons, electrons, and neutrons. Let's try one more. So if we were in class, I would give you a minute to discuss these questions with your neighbor, but pause the video if you want to try them, and I'm going to go over the answers in three, two, one. So what is the atomic mass of chlorine? I kind of mixed up the order of these to kind of see if you were paying attention. So when I put the labels up here, the small number is the atomic number, the larger number is the atomic mass. So to answer question A, the atomic mass is 35. Question B, the atomic number is always the smaller number, that's 17. Question C, how many electrons does chlorine contain? Well, I hope you know that's 17 because the electron number is usually the same as the proton number. Letter D, how many protons does chlorine contain? Well, by definition, that's the atomic number number of protons. And the last one, how many neutrons does chlorine contain? I know there's 17 protons plus how many neutrons equals 35. 17 plus what mystery number equals 35? The answer is 18. Okay, let's get back to discussing atoms. Now, we kind of breezed over the electron cloud. I want to go into more detail. So, electrons orbit the nucleus in what are known as energy levels, or electron levels. And that's what you see in this picture right here. You see uh, two electrons orbiting the nucleus. Well, the first level, the first level we define as the level that's closest to the nucleus. The first level, the first energy level, can actually only hold two electrons and then it's full and when, an ele when a level is full we also say that that level is stable so the picture that I've drawn right now this is actually helium helium only has two total electrons those two total electrons that helium has will be orbiting in the first energy level helium doesn't even have a second level it doesn't even have a third level so moving on to the second level When we look at the second level, the second level can, uh, can hold and be stable with, uh, with a total of eight electrons. If it has fewer than eight electrons, then that particular atom is not stable. And that's going to be uh, an important part of this video going forward in a few moments. But notice in the animation that the second level can hold a total of eight electrons. With a total of eight, it is said to be stable. The picture that you see, by the way, happens to be the, the atom of neon. Neon has a total of 10 electrons. Two electrons in level one, eight electrons in level two. Two plus eight adds up to the 10 electrons that neon has. What about that third level? So the third level, the third level can also hold eight electrons. And if an atom has eight electrons, it is said to be stable. It is said to have a full third electron level. And so the picture, by the way, is showing argon. Argon has a total of, count them up, two electrons in the first level, eight electrons in the second level, eight electrons in the third level. Two, eight, and eight, that adds up to 18 total electrons. And so atoms, as we said throughout this, uh, this slide right here, atoms are said to be stable when their outermost level is full, full of electrons. Well, what happens if they're not full of electrons? That's what I want to focus on next. 
So here is a atom of carbon. Carbon has the atomic number of 6 and the atomic mass of 12. Remember that 6 tells me the definition of the atomic number, which means 6 protons, but if it has 6 protons, it also is going to have 6 electrons. So let me draw the 6 electrons. I can add 2 electrons in level number 1, but that's it. That's all level number 1 can hold. And then the remaining 4 electrons go in level number 2. So uh, carbon doesn't even have a third electron level. If I were to ask you, is carbon a stable atom? I hope you would know the answer to that. The answer is no. Carbon is not a stable atom. The second level only has four electrons. It needs four more. It needs to have a total of eight to be full and stable. So what do atoms do when they're not full and stable? That's what, again, this video, the rest of this video is going gonna, is gonna to address. So what do atoms do when they're not stable? They form molecules. A molecule is t are two or more atoms held together by a chemical bond. And as I just mentioned, molecules are going to form when atoms are not stable. Not stable means they don't have a full, complete set of electrons. Well, you may know from middle school that there's really two main types of chemical bonds. So the first one I want to mention are called covalent bonds. And Covalent bonds, again, by definition, it's a chemical bond where atoms are going to be sharing electrons with one another. They share the limited amount of electrons that they each possess. That way they all can become stable. A great example of this is the molecule that we breathe called oxygen. In the, in the, the formula for oxygen is O2. That means there's two oxygen atoms bonded together through what's called a covalent bond, and that's what we breathe, that's what plants give off during photosynthesis, that's what we breathe to keep us alive. So oxygen that we breathe is a molecule made from two atoms of individual oxygen, uh, oxygen atoms. So let's look at an oxygen atom. So in the periodic table I see the atomic number of eight, that means it has eight protons, that also means that it has eight electrons. So let me draw the eight electrons. I can put two electrons in level number one, and I can put the remaining six electrons in level number two. So there's a problem there. Oxygen by itself, the oxygen atom is not stable. It needs a total of two more electrons. So why is oxygen unstable? Because it only has six electrons in its outer level. It needs a total of two more for a total of eight. So what's going to happen? Well, in a moment, I'll show you an animation where oxygen atom, or where one oxygen atom will actually share electrons with a neighboring oxygen atom. So two oxygen atoms will share the limited supply of electrons that they each have. And the end result, what happens when they do this, they're both going to become stable. They're going to form what's called a covalent bonded molecule. Let's show you this animation. So here we have two atoms of oxygen, one in green, one in red. Well, let's add the electrons to the oxygen in red. I know it has a total of eight, so I can put two electrons in the first level, and that leaves six electrons left over in level number two. So both oxygens by themselves are not stable, but watch what they do. They bond with one another. Their, elect their electron levels overlap like this. Now, you know, let me put those notes back up from a moment ago, just so we can have that to reference. So like it says, what happens? Well, oxygen atoms are going to share two electrons with a neighboring oxygen atom. And when they do, the end result, both are going to end with eight electrons. Look at the oxygen in green. It's got its six in green, and then it's got two in red for a total of eight. Look at the oxygen in red. It's got six in red in its outer level, but it also has two in green in the outer level for a total of eight. They both become. And so what you actually see and in this animation, I only animated those four electrons in, in motion, but in reality, all the electrons are in motion. I just didn't want to add all the electrons in motion. I thought that would be too much clutter. So it, uh, what you have is the sharing of electrons right here. So the electrons 
kind of like a figure eight style we'll zoom back and forth between the two oxygen atoms you might often see this diagrammed like this picture right here the two dashes represent chemical bonds this is an example of a double bond two dashes means a double bond because they're, uh, the two atoms are sharing two pairs of electrons. So let's go back to molecules. So the, there's two main types of bonds. One we just mentioned was called a covalent bond. The next is called an ionic bond. And this is a chemical bond where electrons are either gained or lost. There's no sharing. One atom will gain electrons. Another atom is going to lose electrons. And when that happens, this is what the picture is implying. When that happens, the two atoms are going to be held together by magnetism. Good old-fashioned magnetic attraction. You know, when you first played with magnets when you were a four-year-old kid, you were just fascinated with them. When you put the positive end of one magnet next to the negative end of another magnet, they stuck and they held together. And so that's magnetism. The negative charge is, is attracted to the positive charge. So what's going to cause this to happen? Well, the cause of this is says it says one atom is going to steal an electron, or maybe more than one uh, one electron. One atom is going to steal an electron from another, and that's going to create what's called an ion. An ion is an atom that has either a positive charge, or an ion can be an atom that has a negative charge. And so uh, an example of this is when sodium and chlorine bond together, they form something called sodium chloride. You know sodium chloride by its more common name, salt. Salt is a great example of a molecule made from an ionic bond. Let's go ahead and go through an example of this. So here we have sodium in red, chlorine in blue. And if we look at the, the sodium, Na is sodium, we look at the periodic table square of sodium, I see the number 11 on top. That tells me it has 11 protons. So let me fill in this table right now. So, uh, sodium has 11 positively charged protons. I also know it has 11 electrons. So 11 negatively charged electrons. Watch this. The net charge is zero. If you're wondering what do I mean by net charge, when you, when you counter the protons and electrons, you know, if you're given $11, but then you go and spend $11, your net, your net worth is zero. You have no money. And so 11 positive protons are balanced out by 11 negative electrons. That's what we mean by the net charge of being zero. You know, let me draw those 11 electrons. In, in the picture on top. I can put two electrons in the first level of sodium. I can put eight electrons in the second level of sodium. Now sodium only has a total of 11. So that means there's only one electron in sodium's outside level. So I hope you see why sodium is unstable. You know, let's focus our attention now on chlorine. Here's the periodic table square of, cl of chlorine. And chlorine has the atomic number of 17. That means it has 17 positively charged protons. Remember, the proton number is usually equal to the electron number, so that means it has 17 negatively charged electrons for a net charge of zero. Just like last time, the 17 positives are canceled out by the 17 negatives for a net charge of zero. Well, chlorine has 17 electrons. Let me draw them. I can put two of the electrons in level number one. That means 15 are left over. Well, I can't put all 15 in level number two, but I can put eight in level number two. That leaves a total of seven left over. Yes, all seven can go in level three. Remember, level three can carry up to eight. So uh, right now, I hope you see that chlorine is also unstable. But here's where an ionic bond occurs. Watch what happens. The definition of an ionic bond is when one atom steals an electron from another. Chlorine is going to steal an electron from sodium. And when it does, sodium is going to become positively charged and also will become stable because all its electron levels are filled. It doesn't even have a third level anymore chlorine is going to become negatively charged, but it also is going to become stable. When you look at the, the electron levels of chlorine, they're all filled. And watch what happens now. Because of magnetism, 
sodium is positively charged, chlorine is negatively charged, they're going to bond. They're going to stick together and form what's called a molecule, sodium chloride, also called salt. Well, we have to kind of change our table now because of the changing of that electron. So after they bond, the numbers are a little different. First of all, notice how the proton numbers don't change. The only thing that was taken was an electron. Sodium doesn't have 11 electrons anymore. Count up, the, count up sodium's electrons. It only has 10. It lost an electron to chlorine. Chlorine used to have 17 electrons, but it just took one from sodium. So it had 17 plus the one it took from sodium for a total of 18. Now when you look at the net charge, you can see why sodium has a positive charge. It has more protons. You can see why chlorine has a negative charge. It has more electrons. That's what causes them to bond. That's, what, that's that magnetic attraction that I mentioned. So there you go. There's a quick overview of atoms and the periodic table. If you're in my biology class, pause the video and try to answer these questions. Bring them on a separate sheet of paper. I'd be happy to check them for accuracy. Good luck.